Hey everyone, this is Chris here with Daily Motor, and today we've got the infotainment tour and demo on the 2022 Mazda CX-5 and its 10.25 inch infotainment display. I need to get used to not saying touchscreen when I'm in Mazdas because this of course is controlled with this little knob down here right behind the shifter. But before we get into all of that on the infotainment, give you a tour of this screen, let's hop out, take a walk around the CX-5 just so you can see what we're working with today. Not much has changed for 2022, if anything. Uh, the only thing that I can say is different on this particular CX-5 is that our generally black uh, body cladding is now body color. It's white, it matches the car, and I think it makes it look a little bit classier, a little bit lower to the ground, and just nicer overall. So let me know what you think in the comments about that. And if you wanna know more about this Mazda CX-5, we will have other video links down in the description. We've had a couple of CX-5s in the past couple of years. We've done a sound system test, we've done a fuel economy test uh, on this turbo model, and Charlie and I will be doing a put your money where your mouth is uh, review on the CX-5 because we always say that this is our favorite car in this segment. So make sure uh, you check the description for that video as well. But today we're just gonna dive and do a quick tour of this quite simple 10.25 inch uh, infotainment display here. And let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Before I switch to this GoPro right here, I wanna show you how this whole thing works down here because you guys will be looking at the screen, but my hand will be down here on this knob. So it's a pretty simple little device here. Honestly, it really reminds me a lot of early BMW iDrive. We've got a pretty small knob here that turns to the left and the right. In fact, it just goes around in a big circle. You've got a back button directly to the left of it, which of course takes you back. You have a star button to the very right, which will take you to whatever you have set as your favorites. You've got a home button up here, front and center. You've got a music icon to the left, which will take you to media. And you've got a little arrow here on the right for navigation, of course, will take you to the navigation screen. So we have a calm screen on this vehicle. If you tap the home button twice, it'll take you here to just this, all it gives you is a clock. If you tap the home button again, it takes you to what is kind of the real home screen. And again, reminds me of an early BMW iDrive system. We just have these five tabs here on the left-hand side of the screen, and you can navigate them by spinning the knob, and it'll take you to whatever you would like. At the top, we have our information screen. In this, you can monitor fuel economy. As you can see, we've been averaging about 24 mpg. So we can go into settings for that. You can reset it that way. The entertainment menu, of course, will take you to all of your different radio stations. And while we're on this, I have to mention that this car does have a volume knob and it's down next to your infotainment knob. So kind of in a convenient place. It's kind of weird for some people. I've had some people in this car this week that have been like, I hate where that volume knob is. But honestly, if your hand is already down here resting on your infotainment knob, You've only got to move it over very slightly to get to your volume. Um, and honestly, it's quite convenient in my opinion. So let's go ahead in here to FM radio and see how that is. So right now it's just set onto a favorite. You can go in here and you can go down to tuner controls. We don't actually have a tune knob on this car. You actually have to go into the infotainment and do it this way. And if your name is Charlie, then this is something that uh, you don't really care for. But uh, I'm not Charlie, and I'm a Gen Z, so I don't really use the radio, but if this is something that you use, it can certainly be uh, inconvenient to have to go through that many steps when a lot of cars just give you a tune knob, and uh, you can just tune uh, through your radio stations that way. Or if you have a passenger, it can be kind of inconvenient for them as well. So kind of a little bit of an oversight, but honestly, it's something that I don't think is necessary as much as... Um, you know, people claim to still listen to the radio. Everything is really in phone projection now, so I don't know. Manual tuning here, you can do it this way with your with your knob, and if you wanna have manual tuning, you are still able to do so uh, on your radio. Okay, I think that's enough here for the entertainment tab. Let's go ahead and back out and go down to communication. So I have my phone plugged in. Let me unplug it so we can take a look here and see. So you can see here in the communication menu, if you do have a phone Bluetooth to the car, 
you can go in here and take a look at your contacts, text messages, whatever, you can do all of that. But it's so easy to just project your smartphone to the car. I don't know why you would ever really use this menu. Uh, but if you do have a pre-smartphone cell phone, then you are able to do that here in this menu and you can mess with it in, uh, in the communication tab. Navigation screen here, of course, everything still operates from the knob down here. You also have, like I said, a quick access button uh, on the right-hand side here to get you to navigation. Press down on your knob here to take you to the navigation menu to add a destination. If you just want to take a look at your map like we were doing just a second ago. Uh, mute your guidance, adjust your navigation settings, and so on. You're able to do that uh, with the nav menu. So now we'll go ahead and get down to the last tab here, which is settings. I've spent some time in here while driving the CX-5, mostly because I don't like how bright the infotainment screen comes as standard in Mazdas. You're able to adjust the brightness here in the infotainment. You can adjust your heads up display or what Mazda calls the active driving display. You can adjust height, brightness, all that stuff in here. You can see I've got the brightness turned down ever so slightly. I've got the height up. Or your center display, the infotainment, you can lower the brightness. Now in day mode, I don't have a problem with how bright it is, but in night mode, it is so bright. Um, I have it down to uh, pretty low when it switches into night mode. The, uh, the brightness goes down quite a bit. So beyond that, we also have our sound settings in here. Go to your audio settings and you can mess with your Bose premium audio here. Put standard or linear, however you prefer listening to your sound here. Bose CenterPoint and Audio Pilot. Um, if you're curious to learn more about this Bose audio system, we will have our review to that linked in the description. Charlie always does a phenomenal job on the sound system test, so make sure to check that out if you haven't already. Safety settings as far as uh, you know, lane keep assist and uh, collision avoidance options go. You can adjust all that in there. Connectivity settings and system settings. Vehicle settings here, doors, exterior lighting, interior lighting. Ambient lighting is high. I'm actually going to turn that down slightly because it is kind of bright at night. Okay. And when I said simple, guys, I meant simple. This is a very straightforward and kind of small infotainment system. There's really not too much going on here. Um, notification screen. But I can see infotainment screens kind of going more in this direction of just being very simple and less involved because, you know, the next part of this is we're going to take a look at Apple CarPlay. I'm going to go ahead and plug my iPhone in. You'll see Apple CarPlay come up. Everything now is just going towards phone projection. So as you can see here, Apple CarPlay, we have the wide view, five apps across. It looks great on this 10.25 inch uh, screen here. I mean, and this is really all you need. To be honest with you guys, this is all I use in modern cars. I plug my phone in and I go. I've got my music on here. I've got my Apple Maps. I've got Waze. I've got everything I want on here. It's basically just driving with my phone on the dashboard without having to be dangerous and, you know, hold the phone here and do things on the phone while you're driving. So <laughs> with all that out of the way, Apple CarPlay actually looks very nice on the screen. Let's take a look here into Spotify and see what that looks like. Pretty nice. Man, say what you want about this knob, but it works so well. Everything moves very quickly and you really get used to it pretty quickly. Let's take a look here at Waze. Not bad. Cool. This knob is just sort of like muscle memory at this point. I'm, I'm trying to get used to it. And to be honest, at first I was like touching the screen because I figured it was a touch screen because it's, it's in reaching distance, but I don't mind having the knob. Sometimes I like to just be cruising down the road and not have to reach up and be distracted. You can kind of more easily have your hand rested down here and um, it's less distracting to go through things. The only thing that isn't as convenient is say you're in Spotify here. Let's go over to Spotify here and you actually want to like navigate to something. Say you want to get to my daily mix four, you have to go all the way. I 
actually. How do you even get to it? The knob simply will not go. Okay, so that is quite inconvenient because if I want to get down here, the knob will not let me. You have to go here into Recently Played and find the album you want that way instead. So, okay, so I guess the knob is in some ways inconvenient, um, but at least everything reacts pretty quickly. But I would certainly like to see some sort of a touchscreen integration. I always say, if you've got two ways to work an infotainment system, you're doing pretty well. Don't get rid of the knob, but also give us some touchscreen functionality, and that would be awesome. As you can see here, I'm touching the screen and nothing's happening. Just adding some fingerprints for the next guy. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and unplug the iPhone, and we'll take a look here at Android Auto. One click over to the right on the knob, and that brings us to Android Auto. Welcome. As you can see here, pretty decent resolution. Sometimes Android Auto looks like crap. And of course, being that this is Android Auto, we don't have a full screen display. Let's see how the knob works here. Okay. Go back home. And here are our rows of apps. Take a look here into YouTube Music. A little bit of lag, but I'm just going to blame that on Android Auto because Android Auto never like runs properly. So here's a look at that for you guys. If you do have an Android phone, see the knob scrolls through here. Click on your Mazda icon or the home button, and it'll take you right back to your home screen. And that's it. It's a very simple yet effective infotainment system. Just to sum everything up, I do like the design of everything, the simplicity of everything. I like how attractive my Apple CarPlay is on this screen. I like the knob in most settings. Sometimes if you're in Spotify or other areas, it's a little bit frustrating to get where you want to go. Uh, you know, if you had a touch screen, you can simply do one touch instead of having to spin a knob a thousand times. And I would like to see some sort of touch screen functionality on this screen, uh, but also keep the knob. I like the knob, but also give us some touch screen functionality. And I think that that would actually work out quite well and would make this a close to perfect infotainment system. So cool guys, thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you wanna learn more about the Mazda CX-5 other than just the infotainment, we will have videos linked in the description um, of all sorts of things because we have filmed so many Mazda CX-5s. Cool, well, again, thank you all so much for watching. This has been Chris here with Daily Motor and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.